Hey friends, Garkla here. Today, we are set to embark on a journey that time travels back to the age of the ancients and get enlightened by a philosophy called Stoicism. More specifically, we are going to learn what you can learn from this philosophy that we can apply to our everyday life. A few years ago, I was really struggling in med school. The workload was insane, and I often felt overwhelmed and anxious. Whenever I failed an exam, I used to beat myself up for weeks. It was challenging to say the least. Then, I almost randomly came across the teachings of Stoicism, and things started to change. It all started off with a book by Ryan Holiday called The Obstacle is the Way. The book helped me understand that the very obstacles I was facing were not roadblocks, but stepping stones. The obstacle in the path becomes the path. Never forget, within every obstacle is an opportunity to improve our condition. That's what Ryan Holiday said, and it started resonating with me. With time, I started viewing challenges not as problems, but as chances to learn and grow. And let me tell you, it made a huge difference. The workload and pressure were still there, don't get me wrong, but my approach to them had changed. If you're feeling overwhelmed by university or life in general, remember this, the obstacle is not just the way, it's your way. It's not something to fear, but to conquer and grow from. As a result, my academic performance and overall well-being drastically improved. In this video, I want to share three stoic lessons that helped me, and I believe they can help you too. So let's get a cup of tea, and let's jump right in. Lesson number one is, focus on what you can control. Now this concept is incredibly simple, but it's really, really powerful. As students, there are so many uncertainties and external factors outside of our control. Think about it. We don't have the power to decide how challenging our professors will make the exams, and we can't foresee the questions that'll appear on the test paper. There are dozens of variables that directly influence our academic performance. In fact, not just in academia, but in life in general, there are just so many factors that we simply can't control. It might be the weather, traffic, how other people behave, the economy, global events, you name it. Yet despite this lack of control, it's quite natural for us to spend a significant amount of mental energy worrying about these very elements. And this, my friends, is where Stoicism steps in with its profound wisdom. The Stoics teach us not to waste mental energy on external things we can't influence, since, well, we can't do much about them. So the next time we encounter a setback, instead of allowing ourselves to be engulfed by despair or frustration, we can choose to see it as an opportunity to learn and grow. We can analyze the situation, understand what went wrong, and if it's within our control, we can take steps to fix it. Remember, every setback is a setup for a comeback. So the stoic way is to convert setbacks into comebacks by focusing on the variables we can control, rather than being hostage to the variables we can't. We get to decide whether we're going to react or respond, whether we're going to let the situation control us, or we control the situation. Moving on, lesson two is, embrace external events with a calm and open mindset. This lesson is like the natural progression from the first. Once we have grasped the concept of focusing on what we can control, the next step is about how we handle the things we can't control. Now, I don't have to tell you, there will be countless obstacles, setbacks, and tough times during your university years. For that matter, throughout your life as well. That's just the way the world works. We're all subject to life's unpredictable ebb and flow. And more often than not, these are outside of our control. So how do we handle this? Stoicism offers a brilliant approach to dealing with life's ups and downs. The philosophy focuses on embracing external events, even the challenging ones, with a sense of inner calm and balance. But hold on, what does that even mean? Well, it means that we approach these events with an open mindset. We remain composed, irrespective of the situation. We maintain our balance, even when the world seems to be falling. And this isn't just about pretending to be calm or forcing positivity. It's about genuinely accepting the situation and dealing with it with a tranquil mind. Here's the catch though. It's not an easy mindset to cultivate. It demands letting go of negative emotions like anger, fear, and anxiety, which quite naturally surface during tough times. But if we manage to embrace this mindset, we become incredibly resilient. We become capable of handling almost anything that life throws at us. Think of it like this. If you're a med student like I was, you'll face a variety of challenges. It could be a lower grade than you expected on an exam, despite having studied hard for weeks. Or maybe criticism from a professor or attending physician stings. These experiences are unpleasant. There's no sugarcoating it. But remember, while the events themselves might be outside your control, how you react to them is within your hands. So try this. Next time you face a setback, instead of getting upset or flustered, practice responding to it with a steady and balanced temperament. You'll find that over time, this approach will help you manage stress better and maintain focus on the task at hand. Moreover, you'll discover an unexpected serenity in the midst of chaos and tranquility in turbulence. It's like becoming the eye of the storm, the calm center even as the winds of life whirl around you. That's the essence of Stoic Lesson 2. It's about accepting life's unchangeable events with serenity and tackling them with a composed state of mind. The final lesson is, live in accordance with your values. To the Stoics, the essence of a truly fulfilling life isn't rooted in superficial success or material wealth. Instead, they believe that the key to a life well-lived lies in honoring and living in accordance with our deepest, most fundamental values and virtues. It's about acknowledging that our internal qualities, our character, 
integrity, ethics, and kindness hold far greater importance than our external achievements and material possessions. Now let's unpack that a little. What does it mean to live in accordance with your values? It's about being guided by principles that are most important to you. Honesty, kindness, courage, discipline, and so on. It's about making choices that align with these principles even when there is an easier route out there. It's about acknowledging that true fulfillment isn't just about achieving goals or accumulating wealth, but rather about living a life of virtue, a life that resonates with your deepest values. That's where the real magic happens. That's where you discover a sense of purpose, a sense of meaning, and a sense of fulfillment that external achievements can never match. Now let's make this a bit more specific. If you're a med student, like I once was, it's easy to get swept up in the hyper-competitive mindset that dominates academia. You're racing to get the highest grades, land the best residencies, and earn a reputation as a top performer. All these are markers of success, markers of mastery, and they're not inherently bad. But here's the thing, while it's natural and perfectly fine to aspire to personal success and professional recognition, it's equally, if not more, important to place value on meaningful work. Work that goes beyond personal achievement and positively contributes to the greater good. Work that makes a real difference in your patients' lives, in your community. This might mean spending extra time explaining a surgical procedure to a worried patient, or lending a sympathetic ear to a distressed relative. It's about being patient, humble, understanding, and compassionate. It's about nurturing and cultivating qualities such as discipline, courage, justice, humility, and wisdom within yourself. The Stoics believe that by embracing the principles of reason and virtue, we have the power to shape ourselves into the kind of person we aspire to be, and in your case, the kind of physician you aspire to be. So, as we journey through our academic and professional life, let's remember to seek a sense of purpose and meaning in how our chosen path can impact and improve the lives of others. Because at the end of the day, it's not about what we have, it's about who we are. So that's it for this week's video. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to help keep this channel going. See you in the next one.